Hey, how's it going guys? For this week's video, I've been really busy with um, school, getting ready for the end of the semester. Um, so I haven't really had time to put together a fully edited, memed together video. But for this video this week, we're going to be doing um, a review like Evan's last week, just because I can come up with original ideas. I felt like reviewing a game that um, I've played a good bit of that hasn't really been covered elsewhere. Not that I've seen, at least. It's a game called Not For Broadcast. It's on Steam. It's in early access, but I think, I think it's worth the price, which, if I can remember, I think the price is about $20. And for $20, you get, I think, three chapters of story, three good-sized chapters, plus um, they just released a new in between chapter it adds to the story but doesn't at the same time speaking of story the story centers around you a guy named alex winston um and you have taken over the job of a camera operator or a broadcast operator whatever you want to call it for this news broadcast company and so you control like what is shown to the viewers at home you could switch between different camera angles. You can, you load up certain adverts. Loading up different adverts is a way of making choices in the game. And there are other choices. There are choices you can make in the game in between the chapters that kind of affect what happens later on. There's a certain part in the second or third chapter where they give you the ability to choose what picture to show when the when the anchor is talking about um, certain topics, you get to choose between two pictures which to show to the viewers, and that will affect how the viewers perceive this topic or group of people, and that affects the story later on. And the story centers around England during a political shift. So a new political party is coming to power. They're making all these changes that some people like, some people don't like. It's very split and you have a choice whether to appeal to the people in power or to the people who don't want them in power. And so that's, you have a choice there. I think with a game like this, I think it's a very important choice to have, having that control over what people see. And there's there's some parts where there's some like slapstick comedy, kind of like Monty Python kind of stuff. But yeah, it's very immersive in terms of there's a lot you have to focus on. Like, for example, you focus on the certain camera angles. You don't want to stay on one camera angle for too long. But if you do, you're going to lose viewership. If you, you want to change it up so you get more viewers, so you get a better rating at the end of the segment. And if someone swears on the, on the broadcast, you got to censor that. You got to make sure you do it in time or, it's, you know, it's going to affect the viewings. And there's certain segments in some in the second and third chapters where there's musical segments. So there's an optional part to that where you can choose to switch the camera angles in time with the music and you'll get a multiplier on the score. And then I think that's a very interesting concept and I'm, I very much like it. It, it. it does a good job at not giving you too much to worry about, but also giving you a challenge. There's also certain segments where you control this little dot on a screen and you control them up or down. And there's these green blocks that you have to dodge and that it, it's it's it represents interference so if you get in those green blocks there's going to be interference and that's going to lower your ratings you don't want that um so you have to do that while also censoring while also switching camera angles and it's very much a challenging thing at first when you're not really accustomed to all this going on at once but once you really get into it you get a feel for it it's very satisfying to make those good cuts and the good sensors and not getting any interference. And then once you're done with a segment, you load up the adverts, like I mentioned before. You you go to them at the right time, and there's a timer that counts down, and you'll go to that ad break, and then it'll grade the segment at the end. Um, I think there's three segments per chapter, so it'll grade you at the end of the segment, like A+, plus, B, whatever you get. Um, and then at the end of the chapter, it'll show you the three segments and the grades you got. 
and it'll tell you like what you did right what you could have done better on stuff like that um and you also get paid so after the segment or after the chapter is over you get to choose upgrades for any of your stuff like your speakers or your you get to like or like an antenna to change how fast the dot I mentioned before moves up and down. You can also buy little toys like bobbleheads and like a stress toy, stuff like that. Just little fun trinkets and stuff to put on your desk. After you're done with a broadcast day, you get to, like I said, make choices between each chapter um, that affects the story based on what's happening in the world with this new radical government that's come in. Um, but you can also go back and look at the broadcasts that have that you edited. You can go back in the main menu and watch those, you know, so you can like learn from yourself and see what you did wrong, see how you could do better, or look at certain uh, camera feeds that were muted at the time that you couldn't hear. Maybe there was something funny there that you didn't get to hear. You can go back and listen to it. And I think with all these choices and the different ways you can play it, there's there's a good bit of replayability for the three and a half maybe four chapters you get um right now and of course they're still adding on to it and these chapters i should mention come out for free you don't have to pay for them and this is still very early on it released uh january of this year so it's pretty new but you can tell that the team behind this uh the team called not games based in the uk they're very passionate about this game and they put a lot of work into it the news broadcast segments are actually filmed of real people and i think that's a nice touch it kind of makes it seem more immersive more real but besides the actual videos the rest of the game is like actually modeled so it's not real but even so the desk itself your workspace looks really good and there's there's a certain part in chapter one or two not really sure there's certain parts where there's people being interviewed on the news broadcast and they get interrupted and you can't really edit around it and it really shows like you know sometimes things are out of your control even though you have all this control of what's being shown sometimes you don't have all the control I think that's a very nice thing to have in this game to show hey you're not always in control sometimes things are just gonna happen that you can't prepare for you know um, and with the restrictions of like you don't want to be on a one shot for too long you can't just cut away to the news anchor you know while the weird stuff's happening on the other screen because then your ratings are gonna go down your viewership is gonna drop because you've been on one shot for too long so I think it's a very interesting thing to have there and I really like that I think if there was a if there was a way to just if there was like a, a comparison that i could make with this game and another one i'd probably say it's mostly similar to a game like papers please where you have a choice of what happens um and of course there's other games with choices but papers please there's like different factors to consider while you're stamping the papers you know and it's like this there's different factors to consider while you're selecting what adverts to play you know what pictures to select for the topic the guy's talking about to show to the normal people you know there's a lot of choices in that so i think it's mostly close to or i think it's closer to papers please than a lot of other games and like i said the slapstick comedy reminds me a lot of monty python which i really like um i think it's very funny and there were a lot of parts in this game that really made me like laugh like really laugh and I would, I will go ahead and say there's a, there's some mature stuff in there. There's some adult language, like I said, with the censoring and stuff. Um, there's like all that language. There's some nudity, but it is already like pixelated out, so you don't see anything. There's certain adult themes you could say, like conspiracy theories, radical politics. There's comic violence. There's jokes about social issues. So if any of that is is you know doesn't appeal to you then probably don't play this game you know it's not for everyone for sure um no game really is you make a game for everyone you're not really gonna make a good game i think but for an early access game i think it's i think it's very good um for twenty dollars i will say it is set it's not set in modern day it's set in a alternate 
kind of 1980s time period there. And going back to the actually recorded um, videos for the news broadcasts, um, the actors playing these roles I think are very believable. I could, I actually, I watched them while I'm obviously playing the game, and it's, it's, I think it's very believable to see this stuff play out how it is, you know. They do a very good job in their acting, and it, it shows that they're really committed to this, their roles and such. And, you know, props to them for doing that. They did a very good job. In terms of how long it's going to be in early access, they have said that at least 18 months, most likely. Um, I say that because some games do start in early access and they stay there for years and years and years. They never go out of early access and they're always just a buggy mess. This game has, as far as I've seen in my playthrough, no bugs at all. There is like one typo that I've seen when you're making choices in between the chapters. I saw one typo and it wasn't even that bad. So there's not really much problems that I can see at least in my game. Um, they are planning about 10 levels. I would probably get it if you're gonna get it. If uh, this review has swayed you at all, I would say um, get it now while it's $20 because they're going to raise the price as they add more content, which makes sense. You don't want to make a $60 game if you're only going to have, you know, one, two chapters of the story. You know, you want to make it $60 when you have, like, all the chapters. And I think that's a very fair thing that they're doing there, is raising the price as they add more content. Overall, this is a very good game that is in early access for $20. There's three chapters. There's also the telethon, which, like I said, is the newest um, in-between chapter. So it's it's in between chapters two and three. So it's not really a main story point. It's just kind of an in-between chapter. Um, and they also made a chapter kind of playing off all this COVID quarantine stuff that's gone on. Um, so like the news broadcasts or the news anchors are like at home while they're doing the news. Um, kind of like a play on everything that's been going on, which is very clever, and I liked it. Um, it should still be in the game, I don't know why they'd remove it, but just in case it's not there, don't say, you know, oh, well, you told me it was going to be there, but it wasn't. I'm going to go ahead and say, I don't really know. But that chapter also adds a new mechanic into it that keeps you on your toes, while you're, ed while you're uh, editing the broadcast. It's got great acting, great visuals, um, graphics are nice. You have lots of control over what is shown to the people and that, uh, uh, that amount of control provides a lot of challenge, I think. But I don't think it provides too much of a challenge to where it's like, okay, well, this is just impossible. It gives just enough of that challenge to make it like, Okay, I gotta keep on my toes, I gotta keep my eyes on what's going on, keep my ears listening for anything that needs, you know, to be censored or anything, keep my eyes on, you know, if I need to watch out for any interference. Overall, I think it's a very good variety of stuff to keep you on your toes. There's a lot of replayability factors I can see in here, you know, if you like it, buy it, they're gonna be adding more in the future, and um, honestly, that's about it for this kind of informal review. Um, I didn't have a script or anything, so you know, we'll see how this comes together. Um, but but yeah, that's uh, that's my review of Not For Broadcast. Um, hope you guys liked it, and I will see you next month when it comes around for my video again. So, see you later.